And the other issue was we saw various uh, U.S. airports protesting and saying that they will not allow 5G equipment close to them. Is that a problem that India would face that the moment 5G comes up there would be issues of that? So that was a very specific problem to U.S. because uh, some of the frequencies they had uh, assigned for 5G were very close to the legacy aircraft, old aircrafts, which were using for that particular frequency or a frequency near that for their altimeters. Okay. We in India and uh, in fact most of the countries have actually left a significant gap between the uh, frequencies that are, that are used by aircraft equipments and the frequencies which will be used for 5G. So that's not a risk. And the third thing is that with private companies bidding, Reliance, Geo, uh, and Vodafone, so this thing as well as, of course, Adani's group, what equipment will they be using? Because I'll, we had said no to Huawei and various countries had said so. How will they make up and are we concerned about the kind of equipment that they would get in for 5G and would it compromise our security in any way? No, we have a very well-defined trusted source regime. So this is a regime which is very scientifically done, very neatly defined. So any equipment which doesn't test our, doesn't fulfill our, doesn't meet our uh, trusted regime uh, framework, then that equipment will not be used. Good thing is we have a complete ecosystem of equipment. We have a complete ecosystem of software. We have complete ecosystem of handset manufacturing. All that is available in the country now. Now, there are two other factors that uh, one is the cost factor. You have say 800 million smartphones in this country, but only 7% is 5G enabled. People like you and me, can we now afford to get into 5G? How expensive would the equipment be? And second is the tariff. Because okay, we have the equipment, but if the cost is too much, we may not use the 5G. How do you rationalize that in, in this? In terms of equipment, the handsets, as in when the ecosystem develops and the service becomes available, immediately the ramping up of those equipments happens, right? In India, today, we are the second largest manufacturer of mobile phones in the, in the world, right? Close to 25 to 30 percent of the mobile phones which are manufactured in the country are already 5G enabled. So many of these will get sold in the country now once the service is launched, right? Second, the cost of 5G enabled handsets is coming down every year. Entry level 5G phone today is around 15,000 uh, 15, rupees as the entry level phone. That number is again coming down. And over a period of 5-6 months or maybe one year, most of the phones will already be 5G enabled only. Right? So that is a journey which happens in every technology cycle. The second part of it, India, Indian telecom market, Indian telecommunication service is today among the most affordable telecommunication service in the world as per the ITU affordability right. index. So I think the trend is going to continue as among the most affordable in the world even in 5G also.